Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science Sunday morning virtual service, take two. <laughs> Thank you so much to all of you for staying online. I'm sorry we had technical issues, but we know in God the solution is always there, and it revealed itself, and so we are now moving forward. And so let's all join in our opening song, God is All There Is. that, please join me in prayer. As we turn our attention inward, recognizing that indeed God is all there is, that everything in creation comes out of that one love, that one life, that one infinite goodness that is God, that lives and moves and has his being throughout all creation, that is fully and equally present in all creation, including in around and as each and every one of us gathered for this virtual service this morning. I absolutely know that we feel that vibration of God's love in coming together as a congregation, whether in person or virtually, it matters not. That vibration of love is an energy in which we're all interconnected. I absolutely know that that vibration of God's love is already shown up as that energy of collaboration coming together. It absolutely flows through everyone who is of service this evening. It flows through our music ministry, through Karen and Sam and Susan Kay, our soloist, and Dean leading our chants. And I absolutely know that the perfect word of God that we have come to hear this morning is spoken through Dr. Mark, that he is that vessel through which we hear exactly what we need to hear to remember that divine essence of our being and to experience it more fully in our lives. And so I give thanks right here, right now, for all the blessings I know we receive today through this time together. 
And in gratitude, I release this word, knowing it's already so in the mind of God. And so it is. Amen. It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within, ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me with love, and glorious to Ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me with love, and glorious to know that we are one. It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within. Ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me with love and glorious to know that we are one. And so, please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now, please join in our congregational song, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am, and so it is. God is the joy that I am. God is the joy that I am. God is the joy that I am, and so it is. Every day in every way, I have everything that I need. When I say love is the way, I have every chance to succeed. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. And so it is. Where I go, I always know that God's forever on my side. As I grow, I'm in the flow. I only need it to decide. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. So this is a time in our service where we give ourselves a gift of just getting still and commuting with that presence, just turning within. So I invite you to just get still, to close your eyes. And for the next five minutes, repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
Okay. All right. Good morning, and thank you so much for being here and for your patience with us this morning. Uh, I'm so, so grateful, and I'm very happy to be here with you in church, uh, virtual church. So my topic this morning is, it's all in your mind. And boy, what a topic for us as students of the science of mind. 
You know, there is a relationship between our mind and our body. And I think we all understand to some degree that, you know, there are always advances. Consciousness is always evolving in the world in which we live. And basically, basically what I hear from people again and again that I think is just so interesting is that people say, well, if I could just be well, if I could just be healthy, then I would be happy. And I think we have to reverse it, honestly. I think I must be happy and then I have a much better opportunity to have the consciousness, you know, where I will be well. That's how it works. See, there's no surprise that there is a definite relationship between health and happiness. You know, Deepak Chopra says, your body hears every word you say. And the new physics is certainly proving this to us again and again and again. So since happiness is a state of mind, there is a definite relationship between our mental state and our physical well-being. I mean, doesn't that make sense? It sounds so obvious when I say it out loud, but I mean, I really want us to get this. We seek to establish a right relationship between our thinking and what's manifesting as the good and perfect health of our body. You know, today we understand that there are many uh, physical conditions that are the result of our habitual thought patterns. This is what science of mind teaches us. You say, why? We, we live in a yes universe. So what you think about becomes true because the universe is constantly, constantly saying yes to it. So no one can straighten out our thinking for us but ourselves. We're the ones. No one can do it for us. It's up to us. Now, life is God. This is what we teach in the science of mind. Our life is one with the life of God. The spirit that is everything and the spirit that is within us. So our life is one with the life of God, the spirit that is everything, and that spirit is within us. So Carl Jung, who everybody knows who Carl Jung was, said faith and the belief in the reality of our own soul are the best possible mental hygiene. So to have some faith, and to believe, to really believe, you know, that your soul is here and it's evolving and it's growing and it's here to thrive. Ernest Holmes said that at the core of every neurosis, there is, um, he says it comes down to rejection or guilt, insecurity and anxiety slash uncertainty. Uh, Wow, that's a lot. I think, I think that's a lot. If we are alone, brooding, if we're unhappy, we are yet to discover the basic relationship between ourselves and the world that we live in. Because you know, if, if we have no faith, we're not going to have any confidence. That's, it, it seems to me. And so this has an effect on our physical body. If we don't have faith, we're not going to have confidence. That's going to affect the body temple. We can't go back and relive our lives, right? It's impossible. I can't go back and do last year over completely differently as much as I would really, really love to. Um, I can't do it. But I can make peace with my past. And you can make peace with your past. You know, I, I can rethink my experiences. Science of mind teaches us that life intends only good for all of us. That each of us, we are needed, we are wanted, we are loved. And personally, I have great faith in God, in life, and I hope that you do too. Because life desires, the principle of life itself desires only that which is good for us. Life wants us to be well and happy. And this is rooted in faith. Right? There is no substitute for faith. We are rooted as a spiritual being. We are rooted in pure spirit. And our mind gets its pattern of thought from somewhere. Right? So where, where, is, where is that going to be? All of our unconscious thought processes are based on our relationship with the universe. All of our unconscious thought processes are based on what we believe our relationship with God to be. So if a sense, if we have any sense of um, rejection in our life, they say in work or in a relationship, we have to replace it with a sense of acceptance. Ernest Holmes says that what we do is we pour in the constructive opposite. 
Life needs us or it would not have put us here. We are essential to God's ever unfolding plan. And so we overcome rejection, how? By having confidence in life, by having confidence in the principle of life itself, by having faith in God, by believing God is within us, but God is also around us, and God is always, always, always desiring only a fuller and greater expression of itself, which is another way of saying God only desires our greater good. Now let me say something about guilt. Guilt is an enemy that's just harbored in the mind. Guilt can produce all kinds of physical problems, but certainly physical stagnation. Jesus often forgave people before he performed the healing miracle of love. Love alone casts out fear. We teach that that love will cast out fear. This is why it's so important that I focus on the love of God within me and that that love of God is within other people as well, whether they are demonstrating it or showing it to me or not. Love alone is what casts out fear. So for so many of us who have experienced so much fear in the last year, it's very clear, all that what this is pointing to is that we have to focus on the love that is within us, the love of God, giving that love out to other people. Most of our criticism of others, I think, comes from an unconscious rejection of ourself. See, because people always, when we talk about forgiveness, people always say, oh, but what about self-forgiveness? Here, let me tell you a little secret about forgiveness, and this is the truth. You can take this to the bank. All forgiveness is self-forgiveness. We think it's about what the other person said or what the other person did or how they hurt us or they stole from us or they took something from us or blah, 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 blah and all that stuff because we all have a great story about that, right? But where does that discontent lie? In our mind. That discontent is all in us. You know, the other person that you have not forgiven, they are boldly living their life, having a fabulous time, not even giving you another thought. So why are you going to limit the expression of the life of God that you uniquely are because of what somebody else does or does not do? Ugh. All forgiveness, all forgiveness is ultimately self-forgiveness. I was thinking something I should not have been thinking. I was not looking at other people the way God looks at other people. I was not being my best, most conscious, trying to be a spiritual guy self. So I think what we have to do is actually fairly simple. If everybody knew that they were loved by God, so that's it. We have to meditate daily on the thought, God loves me. I've heard Ernest Holmes say this in an old, old tape of his years ago. I remember him saying that every day the students of the science of mind must meditate on the idea that God loves me. Another way to say that is life needs me. You know, that, that what we get to do is that we get to be a spiritual being here on earth and we are extending love to all others. And as a result of doing this, guilt and condemnation and rejection, all of that starts to disappear. Now, the other one that I mentioned were, were insecurity and anxiety. No good comes from them. You know, did you ever, did you ever at the end of a day, you know, your spouse comes home and say, how was your day? And you say, oh my God, I was anxious all day. It was fantastic. <laughs> no, of course not. You know, oh, I was overwhelmed with insecurity. I couldn't do a thing right. It was a fabulous, of course not. Of course not. You know, we, we relieve this through confidence and faith in life. Right? I, I can't feel insecure if I have faith. Wow, that's, that's pretty fantastic, I think. So always, always, it's about reconciling my faith. Oh my God, I've got to reconcile my faith. When, when the sense of faith in life is restored, that insecurity just sort of withers away and dissolves. See, it's the unconscious feeling, I think, of insecurity that produces most of our anxiety. I think this is what we've been dealing with a lot the last year because there has been so much insecurity 
No wonder we have been so, so anxious. You know, the feeling that things are just not right, that the future looks uncertain, even gloomy. We don't know. You know that, what, but, but that kind of thinking, what that does is that robs the present moment of its happiness, right? And so anxiety disappears in the presence of faith. So here we are again. So it's like this. A tree cannot flourish. A tree cannot really survive if its root structure is destroyed. And just so, it's impossible for us to exist in happiness and wholeness unless we recognize the greater life in which we are rooted. So how I say that in my own mind is I live and move and have my being in God. This is what Ernest teaches us in the Science of Mind textbook. We live, we move, we have our being in God. I can't have radiant physical health without emotional balance. Right? I can't have emotional balance without first establishing some kind of spiritual equilibrium. And it's not enough to say we're from God. We live in God. So Ernest Holmes used to say it like this, and I think this is one of the most amazing things. He said, there is only one life. Although, right, so we look around and we think we see lots of lives, but Ernest said there is only one life. This life, meaning the life that we are living right now, is the life of God. And not only is this life that we are living right now the life of God, he says this life is perfect because God can only be perfect. And he says, and this life is is my life now. There is only one life. This, this life that we are living is God's life. This life is God. This life is perfect, and this life is my life right now. If you want to be well, you have to be happy. If you want to be happy, you got to have some confidence. Makes sense to me. If you want to be confident, I think confident comes out of faith. There must be a fundamental conviction that there is a power greater than we are, and yet we are a part of it, and we have to learn to have complete reliance on this greater power. I say to myself all the time, I trust in God. I trust God. God trusts me. I have faith in God. God has faith in me. I have perfect faith in God. God has perfect faith in me. I say things like that to myself all day long, because we have exactly we have and we experience exactly what we're looking for. The bottom line is that life is for us. It is not against us. Life comes to us new and fresh every day, and I think that is just the most exciting thing. The Spirit of God has made me. The breath of the Almighty has given you and me life. And with every breath, and, and this is perhaps one of the best things we could do right now, is take a breath. I mean like a big, cleansing, healing breath. So I've been doing this with people that I work with lately, and I've been saying, I breathe in the love of God. And so just take that in. Imagine yourself. Feel yourself breathing in the infinite love of God. It goes to every cell in your body. And exhale out anything unlike that. Fear, anxiety, irritation, a sense of separation. Just let all of that go. So do that with me right now. Breathe in the love of God. And exhale anything unlike that. Breathe in the love of God so that it comes into every cell of your body. Healing, restoring, strengthening, renewing you. Exhale anything unlike that. And so join me in consciousness now. As we turn our attention inward, I know for myself, I know for each and every one of us that our body is the temple of the living spirit. And I believe in the ability and the willingness of the spirit to sustain its own creation. That includes each and every one of us. We are sustained by the love of God. I believe that every organ, every action, every function of our physical bodies is animated by the living spirit within. I have complete confidence in this. I know that I am loved of the spirit and needed by it. I am at home in spirit. There is no condemnation, judgment, or fear in me. I feel that I belong in the world in which I live. I love people and I am loved of them. I have a deep sense of confidence and trust. I feel that I am secure in life and I need not be anxious about anything. 
I lay all fear and doubt aside and enter into a quiet communion with the spirit of confidence and complete acceptance. I feel my whole being is renewed, invigorated, revitalized, made alive. There is complete stillness and perfect peace at the center of our being. And we just simply wait in peace on that presence that makes all things perfect. We include our loved ones in our prayer, the world in which we live, All synagogues, churches, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths. And I know we're blessed and uplifted that we are healed by being together today. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. And so it is. Amen. All right. We'll sing one time together. so blessed I am so grateful for all that I have I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful I am so blessed all right I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
Indeed. We are feeling groovy. Thank you, <laughs> Susan K. Wyatt. Susan Music can be found on iTunes, so um, just go to iTunes and get some more for inspiration. And you, too, will feel groovy. <laughs> so uh, just a reminder that donations over the phone can be called in uh, to the church number, 818-762-7566. And you can do that with a credit or a debit card. We'll be here for about 30 minutes after service to take those. And of course, you can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donation page. Or you can uh, text your donation by texting the word give to 818-457-3419. Please know that Prayer with a Practitioner is available after service on Zoom, so just ask the Zoom host to connect you with one of our practitioners in a breakout room for one-on-one -on -one prayer. And you can email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org or call in to the church number. And option four allows you to leave a voicemail message with your prayer request. We collect those voicemails and emails every evening and send them out to all of our practitioners. So you'll be well supported in prayer. Wednesday evening service, as always, the meditation beforehand starts at 6.50 p.m. The service itself starts at 7. And my topic this uh, Wednesday will be Savior Syndrome. And uh, hope to see you on Facebook Live or Zoom for that. Our annual meeting. We'll be having the annual meeting for members of the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. And it'll be held on February 21st. That's Sunday at 11 AM right after the Sunday service on Zoom. So it'll be on Zoom only. The Zoom link uh, is the same one used for our Sunday and Wednesday services. It can be found on our website. And a notification letter was emailed to all members. So if you didn't get it, please be sure to check your spam or junk mail folder. And if you still didn't get it, you're welcome to call in uh, to let us know. We look forward to you being there with us on Zoom, February 21st, 11 AM after service. Zoom virtual patio before and after our Sunday and Wednesday services. You can join together with the congregation, visit uh, 20 minutes before and then after the service. Our men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 AM. All men are welcome for that. And our Zoom meditation continues Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8.15 AM. And so just visit our website, nhcrs.org, for information on how to connect to any of the events going on. And also, if you want to sign up for our weekly e-blasts or monthly newsletters. Again, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for your patience with some of our technical issues up front. We're so glad you were here with such a great message. Thank you, Dr. Mark. And let's all of us now join for the peace song. <laughs> Let it begin. 
So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you.